Hey, good morning, everyone. Welcome to our Kids Church at Home today. And uh, we're going to jump right into our lesson. Uh, today, we're going to talk about waiting. So I want you to think for like five seconds, think of some things that you have to ever wait for. I mean, it, it, it could be like, oh, waiting for the cookies to be done baking in the oven. Or, or maybe it's like you have to wait for your birthday or Christmas or some real special event. Or maybe, maybe you've had to wait before for um, like guests who were coming to visit. Like I know one time, um, my family, we were waiting because um, uh, like my kids, their aunt and uncle were coming for a visit and we didn't know exactly when they would come. We just knew what day. And so we spent all day waiting and being excited and getting ready. And we just knew at any moment they could show up. Right? So we had to wait all day for that. That was really fun. Um, but we all wait for different things. So here's what I want you to do. On when I, I'm gonna go one, two, three, go, and then I want you to just say out loud something you have to wait for. Ready? One, two, three, go. Oh man, I wish I could have been there to hear what you said. All right, we all wait for stuff. Um, here's how I want us to kind of uh, think about waiting a little bit today. And uh, first thing I have here is this ball. And I don't know if you can quite tell on the screen you're watching on, but it is covered in suction cups. In fact, it is a little ball of suction cups itself. And so here's what we're gonna do with that. We're gonna stick it right there to that whiteboard. All right, and here's um, two things I know about this. One, it is stuck. It, it's stuck there. Two, um, it will eventually fall. I don't know when. It might be sometime during this video. It might, it might not even fall today. But uh, you, you just watch it while I'm talking and see what happens. See if it manages to fall. But because that could be there a long time, I've got something similar. And it's, um, it's this blue buggy looking thing. And here's what happens with this thing. Uh, when I squish it down like this, and I set it down on the table in just a second, I know two things about it. I know right now it's stuck down, and I know that at some point, at any moment, it's gonna like jump up off the table. I don't know when. I just know it will happen. And so uh, we'll, we'll wait for both these things while I talk, and uh, you just watch them, all right? So we know that Jesus is going to come back. Here's how we know that. Uh, if you remember last week, Jesus, uh, we talked about how Jesus was, right, he died and he came back to life, and then he went up to heaven. So here's the scene, right? Jesus and his disciples, his closest followers, were out on a hillside, and Jesus has given them their last instructions, and then, oh, there it goes, right? Just jump to life. So Jesus and his disciples, up on the hillside, and Jesus gives the final instructions, and then he, what? He rises up to heaven. And so, I don't know if this is exactly how it happened, but I picture it in my head being something like this. There's the disciples, right? And they're out there, and they're like, whoa, look at Jesus. And the other one's like, yeah, look at him go. And they're just staring there, right? And they're just staring, watching for a while. Uh, and then as they're out there, the Bible says that like some, an angel showed up and said, hey, uh, what, are you, what are you doing, so to speak? I, I'm, I'm summarizing and paraphrasing, right? And they're like, Jesus. And they're like, yeah, well, guess what? He's coming back. In fact, Jesus told them that very thing earlier when he was with the disciples. He says, I'm, I'm going to leave and I'm going to prepare a place for you. And so they're like, okay, we know he's going. We know he's coming back. And, and that's what the angel said. He's coming back. Of course, that, that should raise a whole lot of questions for us, right? And, and you guys might know what the, the, the six kind of basic questions are, right? The who, what, where, when, why, and how are the questions. Well, let's talk about that for a minute. The, the who, where, when, why, and how of Jesus' return. Well, uh, let's at least talk about four of the, the six. Let's see, we'll start, with, we'll start with how. How will Jesus return? Well, what we learn from that encounter of the disciples on the hillside with the angels is that Jesus will come back in the same way that he left. 
So if he left just kind of floating up to heaven, he's going to come down floating from heaven, coming down from the clouds. But he will come with power and with glory, and he's going to come back, and, and it's, I think, and I'm confident, a whole lot more than just 11 people are going to notice. Right? However many were on that hillside with Jesus, his closest followers, I, I think more people are going to know that when Jesus is coming back. But he's going to come. The how is he's going to come down from heaven like that. Why? Very important question. Why is Jesus coming back? Well, the Bible tells us that Jesus is coming back um, to be king. Right? So that everyone will worship him as king. Jesus is going to come back and he's going to gather together all his followers and we're going to worship him because Jesus is the creator. And he's also the king of the whole world. And so he's going to come back and he's going to be king and we're, he's going to have all his followers, everybody who believes in him together, worshiping him. And that brings us to our next question. Uh, the, the, uh, the who. Who is Jesus coming back for? Well, Jesus is coming back for you and for me and for everybody else who believes that Jesus is God. For everybody who says, yeah, I'm, I'm a follower of Jesus. For everybody who believes that Jesus is their king, then Jesus is coming back for all of us. That's pretty, that's pretty great. We, we have that, that expectation, that waiting, that excitement that Jesus is coming for us. Uh, then that brings us to the, actually a really hard question. Those three we could answer. We have answers for those three questions. But when we ask about when, when is Jesus coming back? That we don't know. I don't know when he's coming. The Bible actually doesn't say specifically when he's coming back. Jesus, it seems, didn't even know exactly when he's coming back. At least he didn't um, he didn't tell anyone if, if he did. But, so we're kind of waiting, like we're waiting for this ball to drop. We know it will happen. We just don't know when. I, I knew this would jump, but I didn't know when. And that's kind of what we have to do today, is we are just left waiting. We know it will happen. We just don't know when. And so that probably leads us to the most important question is what? What do we do while we're waiting? What do we do while we're waiting? Well, um, there's, I got three answers to that today that I want us to think about. First is we get ready. Uh, think for a moment. Uh, let's, let's use Christmas as an example. If you're getting ready for Christmas, what do you do? Right? Uh, do you decorate your house? I know in, in my house, we do. In the Miller house, we, we put up all sorts of decorations. And I like to put lights up on some of the, the shrubs outside and on the house. And, and uh, oh boy, really Christmas is the only time we do big decorations at our house. So there's that. We get gifts for people. Oh, I almost caught it. Uh, right? So we get ready for Christmas. We, all sorts of ways. Um, so we can get ready for Jesus to come back. You may think, well, what do we do to get ready for Jesus to come back? Well, um, you can get ready by getting to know him. Because when we get to know Jesus, then we can know that what he says is trustworthy. And so Jesus, because that way, that way, like when Jesus says, I am coming back, or, and, you know, I'm preparing a place for you and I'm coming back, then we can know, oh, yeah, we can trust that. Because I know Jesus and Jesus tells the truth. So we get ready uh, we get to know Jesus by reading the Bible, by praying, by spending time with other people who know Jesus. So we get ready for him to come back by knowing him. We also get ready for him to come back by being pure. Now, I don't know if you have a lot of examples of purity in your, in your house. Um, I think one of the, the best ones is, uh, uh, at least the easiest one, you might have this too, is filtered water. This water, I've seen actually, you can search, you can search online, you get your parents to help you with this. You can find videos of people like putting all kinds of stuff through water filters like this to see how it like takes out all the impurities. But uh, for a time, we're just, it, this was, you know, just good old gross tap, I mean, tap water is not normally gross, but with water advisories and everything, this is just tap water. And uh, look at how clear that is, right? 
It's just absolutely, there's nothing in there discoloring it. Ah, delicious and pure water. Right? So we uh, get ready for Jesus coming back by being pure. You might think, well, how do we do that? Well, um, 1 John 3 says that those who hope in Jesus returning um, are pure. So we don't necessarily, you know, make ourselves pure, but we have a role to play in, in being pure. And when we respond to God, when we trust in Jesus, when we believe that he's coming back, we are made pure through that. And so we get ready, we get pure, or be pure, and we be patient. All right, ready, pure, and patient. You think patient, oh, that's so hard. Yes, it's a lot of waiting. A lot of waiting. We have to be patient. I mean, it's nearly 2,000 years that Christians have been patiently waiting for Jesus to come back. You think about how long that is. We, we can wait. We can do this. We can be patient and wait for Jesus to come back. And while we do that, uh, let's, uh, let's think about our memory verse, right? That's one of the things we do. Like I said, get to know scripture is one of the things we do as we get ready for Jesus to come back. Um, and so our verse this week, just to remind us, it says this, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, for the joy set before him, he endured the cross. Right? That's something important to remember as we uh, get ready, get pure, and get patient uh, for Jesus to come back.